Hello, praise the Lord. God is good that um, he has given us another chance. Every day, every moment, I take it as another chance that God gives me. Every moment that comes, it's another opportunity to interact with God's word. And so again, we interact with his word this time. And we have been talking about Lent season. Lent season, a moment of reflection, a moment of refocusing, a moment of reorienting ourselves. And the last time we shared again, it was about being watchful, be a watcher, a watcher in the word of God, and a watcher in prayer, a watcher in meditation. And so this time again, I want to share about prayer. And I just want to mention a few principles of prayer so that at the end of it all, you may gain something from it. And being watchful in prayer requires a few things that you need to do. And especially you, a Christian believer, a man or woman or young man, whoever you are, God invites us, God requires us to be a people that will always remain in his presence. And prayer is our direct connection with God our Father. Prayer is our interaction with God our Father. We speak to him as our Father, and as our God, who is the creator and knows it all. And so I just want us to think a little about two, three uh, principles of prayer. I know you know them, but reminding ourselves is very, very important because the Bible encourages us to remind ourselves every time we are at home, every time we are at work, every time we are everywhere, we are called upon to remind ourselves of God things. And one of the things that we would remind ourselves this time is about prayer. And so the first thing for you to remain watchful, because the other time we mentioned watch and pray. And our Lord Jesus Christ was telling his people, watch and pray. And so how do we do it? One, we must do it persistently. And so the Bible encourages us to be persistent in prayer. And persistence in prayer means to keep doing it, to continue doing it. It's like breathing in. And so persistence in prayer. Our prayer must be persistent and our Lord Jesus Christ wants us to remain persistent in prayer. And so scripture confirms persistence, continued uh, doing. And I have likened it to breathing in and out. And so that is something, meaning that actually prayer must be like breathing in and out. You can imagine how many times you are breathed in and out right from the time you were born. You can imagine how many times you are breathed in today, this moment, maybe for a week, maybe for a month, maybe for a year. And so the Bible encourages us to remain persistent in prayer. And so Paul in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 says, pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Meaning that actually prayer has to remain part and parcel of us. Watch and pray, so says the Lord Jesus Christ. And so meaning that actually on every occasion, are you at home? That's an occasion. Are you at work? That's an occasion. Are you in church? That's an occasion. Are you playing? That's an occasion. Are you sitting down? That's an occasion. Are you eating? That's an occasion. So when he says pray on every occasion, that's what it means. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, the Bible says, pray without ceasing. And so that one is an invitation. It gives us, it confirms to us that we must keep doing prayer. And I just want to remind ourselves of an old woman, a widow at that. And that is in Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Jesus tells his disciples something and he teaches them, when you open the book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 1, I have talked about that thing before, and I say it again, because we must remind ourselves, and the Bible says that then he spoke to them a parable that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. That we must 
pray and not lose heart. And that's about the persistence of prayer and that we should always pray and never, 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 never mm. give up. And so in Romans chapter 12, rejoice in hope, patient in trouble, persistent in prayer. And so just like we look at Luke chapter 18, the poor widow, the Bible says that she kept going to the judge one time, another time, another time, another time. Whether the judge was hearing, whether the church was planning to respond or not, the woman kept going there. And so one of the things that we need to do, my brothers, my sisters, whoever is listening in, is that persistent prayer is a prayer of faith. Persistent prayer is a prayer of faith. So this Lent season, we are just but somewhere in the middle. We need to remember that we need to persist in prayer. We need to continue in prayer. Every moment, whether God is answering at that particular time or not, remember that you must pray. Someone was telling me that God answers quickly, but sometimes may not answer immediately. That he answers quickly, but not. So it is actually that lapse of time that he must encourage you, that he must keep taking you to another level of prayer to persist and continue on. And remember, there's something that someone has talked about as LMD, LMD, which means last minute deliverances. And so this is what I'm saying that these last minute deliverances can come at a time when maybe you are about to give up. But the Bible is encouraging us, never give up. And so persist, persist like the old woman persisted in Luke chapter 18. And the Bible says, the judge said, I must answer this. I must judge this old woman's case. And it was done. So maybe at the time that I'm about to, be, to give up, God is about to bring your good news. God is about to say yes. God is about to bring it to you. So never give up, my brother. Persist on. Don't never give up. Maybe some other person is giving up, but you should not because the Bible says, confirms it to you and to me. Now, point number two is our prayer should be insistent. To insist. Insist means to be resolute in prayer. It means to be emphatic in prayer. It means to be determined in prayer. It means to be firmly there in prayer. And so this is what we call a wrestling prayer. A wrestling prayer is a fervent prayer of a righteous person. And you remember there are many, many people in the Bible. This Bible is full of examples of men and women that have, that have insisted. Even when things are not moving, but they have insisted. Hannah, that we read about in the book of 1 Samuel, the woman was insistent. She kept pleading with God. She kept crying to God. And actually, insistent prayer is a prayer of crying resolved to turn to God. And so this season, this moment, resolve to turn to God, whatever it is, whatever the problem, whatever the challenge, whatever it is, insist and remain there, never give up. And so it is about boldness in prayer. And I want to give you a few examples. I've already mentioned Hannah, the woman in the Bible, First Samuel chapter one, you read about her, she insisted and God answered her prayer. Another person that he insisted was Abraham in Genesis chapter 18, verse 23 following, when he pleaded with God about the, you know, the destruction, God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, and Abraham insisted in prayer, supposing you find that 50, supposing you find that 45, supposing you find that 40, supposing you find that 40, you know, it was a moment that we learn, I have learned, that actually I must keep keeping on. And I, this is my terminology, that, that I must keep keeping on. Insist, my brother, that we need to, keep, to go on. And this season is for us to do that so that actually when it's all over, we keep the practice of praying together. So another person that I want to mention is about the blind man called Bartimaeus in Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52. Bartimaeus insisted, you know, the man was seated by the roadside, there were so many people passing, and then when Jesus was about to cross by, he was blind, remember? And so he asked, what is this happening? And then when they told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing, he shouted once, son of David, have mercy upon me. 
and listen. The people wanted to silence him. And that is in Mark chapter 10 verse 46. People stopped him. People scolded him. People shouted at him. And that, you remember, there are some situations that can shout at you. There are some people that can silence you. There are, you know, things that can make you stop asking from God. And you remember that they, these people are there. These situations are there. But Bartimaeus, the man, the Bible says, he never gave up. He insisted even, the Bible says, he shouted even the more loudly. Even the more loudly. So, so, despite the warnings, despite the shoutings, despite the scoldings, he shouted the more loudly. And so, my brother, I invite you to do it louder, to do it better, to do it so that the Lord insists there and so that you don't give up. So, don't allow anything. Don't allow anything stand in your way. Reach out to Jesus in prayer. Reach out to God in prayer, whatever the circumstance, whatever the situation. Of course, many, many people have talked about push, P-U-S-H. And of course, they say, pray until something happens. Now, that's a reminder, and it's what I'm bringing to you, insistence, insistent in prayer. Insist on. Now, number three. Our prayer to God should be resistant. And this one, when you hear it, resist what? Any prayer. Prayer is should be resistant. Of course, listen to me. The enemy, the devil, never gives up. And so what we do in the resistant prayer is to resist the tactics, the tricks, you know, of the enemy, of the devil. And so it keeps trying one after another. Keeps trying one method, one method after another, one trick after another to make you fall down. Remember, it tried it to Jesus Christ. We read about Matthew chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, the temptation. And the first temptation, the devil takes Jesus to the, the stones there. And then Jesus defeats the devil there. It maneuvers, takes him to another, to a, to a high place, from a high place to show him the kingdoms of the world, takes him to the top of the mountain, the top of the temple. And these were maneuvers. And so what we're saying is there must be resistance to satanic forces, to demonic forces, resistance to evil, resistance to injustices. And so there is a prayer that you need to pray to resist something. That's a resistant prayer. And remember, the devil never gives up. The, the devil never gives up. It keeps changing and trying to here and there. It camouflages. So, my brother, my sister, the point I'm making here is resist. And so there is what we call resistant prayer. And it is about watching in a prayer. And this is the moment, this is the time. It can be at night, it can be during the day, it can be during whatever time. Resist and resist in a prayer. Now, the final thing that I want to mention because there are so many things that I could mention about prayer, which you know, but I'm just reminding another time, another thing is desi desist, desistant prayer. Our prayer should be desistant. And now that's not mean to desist. Desist means to, you know, um, not trying to, to, to do things the way you desire them to happen. We should pray, but not attempt to answer our own prayers. Desist from them. Because when you try, when you try to answer, you have answered, you have prayed, before God answers, you have given an answer yourself. Now, we are saying, desist from that. Do away with that. Because that's not a God way. I want to give you maybe about two examples. One, about the man called Abraham. Abraham had prayed, had cried to God for a child in Genesis chapter 15. And he prays, but you are giving me, you are calling me, but I don't have a child. And listen to me, God was in on his way to bring Abraham a child. Now, Abraham, before God could answer, before God could respond, Abraham had found an answer through his wife's request, Sarai, that actually got to Hagar, the, the person, I mean, the slave. And remember, after that, things did not go well. So we are asked to say, no, desist from that. In the family of Abraham, there were issues, there were challenges. Eventually, the girl with the boy were sent away because eventually God answered the prayer. So we are saying, my brother, desist from answering your own prayer. Never attempt to answer your own prayer. Now, the other thing is um, when, um, 
God is attempting to do something and you jump in there, there is trouble. Desist, desist from, the, from that kind of thing so that you give God his own time, you give God his own opportunity to answer your prayer. Remember, um, even Moses actually, Moses, um, when he was leading the people of Israel, well, he pleaded with God very many times. And do you know why Moses could not reach the promised land, the land which God had promised? There were issues because he did not desist from, um, he, he attempted to answer his own, his own prayer requests. Now, um, at the rock, God tells him to strike once, he strikes twice. And these are challenges. Now, my brother, my sister, as I close up, because it is um, a reminder about prayer this season, one, the prayer must, you persist, insist, resist the forces of the enemy, and desist from answering your own prayer. And this is a temptation. This last one is a huge temptation. You have asked God to do something, you provide an alternative. Which alternative will bring you challenges? Which alternatives will bring you a problem? Like it was in Abraham's house. So insist, persist, insist, resist, and desist. And the prayer time, this time round, God is saying, watch, watch, and pray. And pray without ceasing. So I implore upon all of you, my brothers and my sisters, to keep the practice to keep praying and praying means you trust you keep trusting god you keep depending on god and may god is our father remain with you keep you insist on persist on resist the devil like we read in ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 and then on desist from answering your own prayer and leave it unto god in the name of jesus christ our lord i pray for you and i pray for myself amen <music>